So welcome to Premiere. When you're dealing with video, uh, you are dealing with a whole bunch of files that take a whole bunch of memory. So organization is really important. So what I highly recommend you do is create a project folder and put every single file that is related to that project in that folder. You can then create subfolders that will allow you to organize those materials very specifically. The more organized you are for this project, the more easily this project will come together. If you have files scattered all over the place to different thumb drives, external hard drives, laptops, school computer, etc., you are going to uh, struggle a bit when it's time to put all of it together. So keep it in a folder. If you need to work somewhere else, copy the entire folder to a external drive, your Dropbox, whatever. whatever. But keep those together and keep track of the most recent versions of those files. So that said, let's get into Premiere. So once we've opened Premiere, it will give us this start window. And all we really need to do here is to click on the new project button. Once you've done that, it will bring up the new project window. And we need to uh, set and confirm just a few things here. So I'm going to give this a name of Shrimp Cocktail Project. And then I am going to tell Premiere where to save all the files related to this project. And so I'm going to click on the Browse button. And that will allow me just to go to my desktop, click on the Shrimp Cocktail folder with all of my assets inside of it, because that is where I want to save all my Premiere files as well. I'm going to click Choose, and that has now been specified here. Uh, all the stuff on the bottom here, the default settings are just fine. I'm going to go to the Scratch Disk uh, tab right here. And what I want to do is I want to confirm that it is going to save all of these various assets to the same folder where I'm saving the project. So Premiere saves a whole bunch of files for you automatically. For instance, it will make a backup every three to five minutes, depending on your preferences. And uh, that means that if your computer freezes up and you haven't saved for a while, well, chances are you haven't lost but maybe a few minutes worth of work. So that's a wonderful thing. Yeah. So anyway, just make sure it says same as project. If it doesn't, you can drop the menu here and just pull down and change it to that. And then that's it. That's all we need to set in here. And that takes us into the Premiere window. And so the first thing I want to do is just talk generally about each one of these four squares. Now, if your desktop doesn't look like mine, uh, go up to the top and confirm that editing is blue. That means it's the active workspace. And if it still doesn't look the same, then you can drop the menu next to it and say reset to saved layout. And that will force the issue. So you see mine moved a little bit, so I must have changed it recently. Okay, so these windows will make a whole lot more sense when we have uh, content inside of them. But for right now, just know that this is the project window. Inside of the project window, even though it does many different functions, we will primarily be accessing our files, our clips, video, audio, and still images in the case of this demo. To the right of that is the timeline window. And in that window, that is where we are going to build our movie. That's where we're going to drag our clips into and arrange them relative to each other along a timeline. Up to the right, the program window, is where you will preview what your movie currently looks like. So when you play in the timeline down here, it will show your movie up here. And then lastly, the source window relates directly to the project window below. This is where you can preview clips before you take them into the timeline and even do things like establish in and out points. And uh, so anyway, that's the overview. Uh, let's start getting some assets in here and we can start talking about this more specifically. For sure. I'm going to show you two ways of getting assets into your project and they're both equally good. I use both at different times. Times, but I want to show you both so you can choose which you may prefer. And so I'm going to go to the media browser here. So down in the project window it says project and then the name of my project. And then next to that it says media browser. 
So I'm going to click on that. And this is a bit of a small window. So let me just for now just pull this up larger so it's a little easier to see what's going on. And uh, I can navigate anywhere on my computer through this window. Now I know my files are in a very specific place, um, so I'm going to go there and then I'm going to mark that as a favorite so I don't have to do all this navigation again. So I know it is on my Macintosh HD, so I'm going to click on that and that will show me all of the folders that are part of my Macintosh HD. So what I want to do is scroll down to Users. So I'm going to double click on that and that will show me various things. Now if you're at school you're going to see a whole bunch of folders because each computer has a whole bunch of users. If it's your computer it will probably kind of look like mine here. So I'm going to double click on Ron. That's the user I am. And uh, then that will give you a group of folders that will probably look more familiar to you. So what I want to do is find the desktop. So I'm going to double click on the desktop folder and that will show me the only uh, folder I currently have on my desktop called Shrimp Cocktail. So if I just mark that and then I can right click on this and if your right click doesn't work you can hold the control key and left click. But this will drop a little menu and all I want to do is choose add to favorites. And then you'll notice over here to the left at the very top it will show you that folder. So in the future I'm not going to have, have to navigate through all that stuff. Thank I can God. just click on the shrimp cocktail folder and it will show me everything uh, that I currently have in that folder. So you'll see we have some clips, both A and B roll clips. Uh, here is the actual uh, Premiere file and then the folders with the music and the images and the titles. So what's nice about this is I can pull things directly from this browser into the timeline window. Now let me just step back for a second. So I'm going to go back to the project area and I want you to notice that the project is currently empty. There are no clips in here. Now I'm going to go back to media browser again and I'm going to go ahead and pull the A roll bud in. So I'm just going to pull that right into the timeline and that will do a couple of things. Here's the bud roll. Now we have now added that to the timeline and the timeline is showing us all the information we want to see. But if I go back to the project window, you will see that here is the mp4 clip I dragged in right there. A roll bud mp4. And above that is another file which you're going to go, where the heck did that even come from? What's that? I don't know. Well, that is what's called a sequence and any time you work in the timeline you must be working inside of a sequence. So if you have a project you can have as many sequences as you want. So if you have a you know a bigger film you may have 20 different sequences for 20 different scenes. Uh, but you're not going to need that. So the example film I showed you in class and uh, the film we're working on here really just need a single sequence and that will most likely be the same. For you. So when I drag the clip into, into the timeline from the browser window, Premiere knows I need it to be in a sequence and so it very kindly automatically made a sequence for me. That is a perfectly fine thing to do the first time you pull a clip in. As long as all your video clips are the same format, that's going to work great. And you'll see if I hover over the A-roll bud, um, it will show me the settings for this clip. Now I'm not going to dwell on this right now because the next thing I'm going to do is show you how to make a sequence from scratch. And so I'm going to click on the sequence up here in the project window and just hit delete. And you'll notice that that also deleted the clip that was in the timeline. So that's fine, that's what I wanted. But it kept the clip here in the project. All right, so let's go ahead and make a sequence from scratch. So there's a couple places you can do that. Here's the new item button in the bottom of the project window. Um, or you can go up to the file menu at the top. So I'm going to click on this. And I'm just going to pull down to sequence. I, I realize most of the menu is getting chopped off on your screen. But sequence is the top item. And that will bring up this window. And this is going to seem incredibly complex. These are all different presets for different types of settings. 
And so I mentioned in class that you needed to check your device, go into the settings, and find out um, exactly what the settings are that you're going to be shooting at. So what I'm showing here is what I would like you to shoot at. Now it's possible your device may not shoot at this size right here. This is called 1080p format, meaning the vertical dimension is 1080 pixels and the horizontal is 1920 pixels. Uh, but if it doesn't, then you can shoot at the smaller version of HD, which is called 720p. So it's 1280 wide by 720 high. Uh, frame rate. 29.97. So that is the actual frame rate, um, but we're going to call it 30 frames per second because we're a simple people. Yeah. And what that means is in a linear second, there are 30 individual still shots that when played quickly together, give the illusion of capturing reality. So that is the frame rate I'd like you to shoot at. Don't shoot higher than that or your memory is going to go way up. And then this third one here, pixel aspect ratio. Now you probably aren't gonna have to deal with this. If you're shooting on your phone or you're shooting on a digital SLR, the odds are very high that it's gonna shoot what's called pixel aspect ratio of one, meaning the pixels are square. Uh, but if you are shooting on a video camera, uh, it's quite possible that it may be shooting in a different pixel aspect ratio. It may actually be creating rectangular pixels. So those have a ratio of 1.333. So uh, if you are shooting on a video camera in particular, check the settings, find out what you're shooting at, and it would be a good idea to check it um, also on your phone or your camera. So all that said, I showed you just a minute ago a much easier way to create a sequence and if you just drag your clip into the timeline it will make the sequence with the same settings as the clip. So you really don't have to do this but you do need to understand what these settings mean. Okay so the way I chose these is my primary footage was shot on a digital SLR so I just went right to that folder and twirled it open Inside of there are three folders for the three different uh, basic sizes. You know, this is large HD, this is small HD, and this is the old standard. And so 1080 is what I shot at, and again, what I'd like you to shoot at. And then in here are three different sets of settings. And the only difference here is frame rate, so 24, 25, and 30. So that's the one I want to choose. And then I'm going to go ahead and just click OK. It created a new sequence right here. You see it's called sequence one and it also opened it up over here in the timeline window. And so I'm going to change this, the name of this, to be shrimp cocktail and hit the enter key and you'll notice that that will change the name up here in the sequence as well. Okay, so that's how you create a sequence from scratch. But again, you can just drag your clip into the timeline. It will automatically make it for you. If I hold over my sequence, then I will, in a second, get a little drop-down window that tells me what the settings are for that clip. And so you can see all of those things that we defined. We've got our sequence. The last thing we need to do is get our clips into here so that we can start putting together our movie. You can do the media browser if you want, but let me show you the way I prefer is I like to get all my assets in before I even start creating my movie. And so to do that's quite simple. I'm just going to import them all at once. And I can click right here in this area, this empty area of the project window. So just double click. That will open up my navigation window. Should go right inside of the folder we specified earlier. And I am going to command click um, all of the, or if you're on a PC, control click, all of the files that I don't have yet. So those are the three B-rolls, um, but one, two, three, and then the music folder, um, the still images folder, and the titles folder. So I don't need the A-roll, got it already. The shrimp cocktail project is the premiere file, and I don't need to get that. So once I've got those selected, I just click import. So once those are 
imported, or almost imported in this case, I will get a pop-up window because I have a layered Photoshop file in here. And in Premiere, you have the option of either flattening those into a single object, which is what I'm going to choose here, merge all layers. But I could also um, bring in the individual layers, which is really helpful at times. But for now, just click OK. And that finishes up, and that brings it all in. So I'm going to click on Name to get this in alphabetical order. And you'll see there are all of my assets now, including my sequence. And so I am ready to start building. So let's do that. Let's make a movie.